I was gone for a few seconds. They uh, shot me and revived me. When I came back to, everything was solid white. I gradually got my hearing back and heard what they were saying. This is Mr. Burke, he's 35 years old. Onset of chest pain this morning. It was like angels. The modern emergency room is the front lines of the healthcare battle. And then gradually got my vision back. As the debate over health care reform rages in America, one fact is not in dispute. Americans enjoy one of the highest levels of care in the world. When 35-year-old logger Roger Burke went into cardiac arrest, he was rushed to the University of Virginia Medical Center in Charlottesville, Virginia, where state-of-the-art cardiac care was available. Early in my career, uh, patients who came in with heart attacks, we really had nothing to offer them other than watching them, observing them, making sure they didn't have some arrhythmia. Give me a medicine check. What's he got so far? Now we uh, have gone to, uh, we have acute interventions where we could take somebody to the cath lab within 90 minutes of arrival. Now we want medicines in and we want them down to the cath lab. A USA Today Gallup poll found that four in 10 people have visited an ER in the past year. Millions of those patients will show up without insurance. Hey kiddo, I'm Dr. Barr. What's going on? No two days are exactly alike. Here at the University of Virginia, we'll start to see about 10 to 12 new patients per hour, starting around 10 to noon. That pace continues throughout the day and uh, starts to wane around 11 p.m. or midnight. You never know what's going to walk in the doors. Yeah, hurry up, finish up so you can go home, Nikila. Sometimes we get kids that come in with spells, sometimes they have seizures. She was so pale and, yeah. and just wasn't responding. So that's when I called because I was like, something's not right. Oh, how you doing? I'm so Dr. O'Connor, nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Are you sure he didn't want to just jump up and give a little kiss? No, he didn't give me a kiss. He all un he's all grumpy. He's all grumpy and he chewed on you, huh? It's Scottsville 706, it's a GBA med call. Uh, yes, sir, we're around your facility. The best thing about U.S. healthcare is that when it works, it works very well. Patients have access to really the, the greatest technology. She's safe and sound. She's doing well. And uh, they were talking about trying to take the breathing tube out. Uh, good job. She's doing great. Hold your breath. This gentleman seems to be in a lot of pain. The technology has changed dramatically. Uh, when I first started out, uh, we could take a single slice of the body in about 79 seconds, and now we can take uh, several thousand images within a few seconds time. Advanced diagnostic tools come at a price. Who pays that price is the question. From dog bites to heart attacks, 24 hours in the ER gives us a snapshot of the complexities of the healthcare situation in America. It won't hurt, okay? It's like jellyfish. Yeah, like jellyfish, exactly, but it has some medicine in there. In the following chapters, we listen to healthcare professionals and their patients to gain their perspective on this national debate. Three souls on three zero fuel, you're clear to depart from your means. The worst thing about the U.S. healthcare system, from my perspective, is the number of uninsured patients that we have. Deborah Griffin is one of those uninsured. So am I going to be here another two hours waiting? I'm not she visits the ER two to three times each month for chronic abdominal pain and has accrued over $60,000 in emergency room bills since January. We don't even know if they're insured or not until well into their visit. At this moment, I'm very disappointed with the way our health care system is, I, I'm not happy with any part of our health care system. You have to decide whether you want to eat and pay your rent or pay a doctor bill. They'll present out of desperation with conditions that could have been contained or could have been treated at a much earlier stage. I had a tooth pull weeks ago. This thing got really bad. Um, no kind of insurance. Um, now, my job offers nothing like that. I work on a farm down in Nelson County. It's minimum wages. Don't hardly pay the bills that we have now, much less a hospital bill. 
Uh, I say tonight's probably going to run for 250, maybe 300, which, I mean, I know it's not much, but it's more than what I can afford right now. Donald Johnson has had diabetes for 44 years. I think my blood sugar is going to pop up here. <laughs> Why don't you take the diet? Yeah, let's just do the diet one. I don't know how anyone could afford the coverage that I have. Um, and the coverage is high for, for is higher because of my age and because of my medical condition. I'm at the upper level of uh, those rates because of my age. Somewhere in the range of uh, 10 to 20 percent of our income goes to medical insurance premiums. Is Miss Woodson's family here? Yes. Okay. Not to be selfish, but I'm sitting here in pain and I kind of want it to be my turn. No, I don't like having to wait two hours, three hours, four hours to be seen. I'll wait 20 minutes and then I would like to sign myself out. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We're a, a five-tiered triage system, and what we're doing right now is as a patient comes in the door, we determine levels one through five. We look for the worst case scenario. That person is going to go right back, and a level five is something that could really, you could come back tomorrow and be seen for it. So I have a patient coming right now. Pat, give him a sticker, okay? I know there's no way we could do it without insurance. There's no way we, we could pay for everything. We get great care, but it's just the cost of it. That is just, you know, overwhelming. I have two other kids with disabilities, two, that get care. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot of cost. All right, Mommy, I'll get you to sign this. And then we can go. Yeah, you can go, honey. We had, you know, insurance through our work, or he had insurance because he was still working, but um, after the heart attacks started, um, he had to go on disability. Medicare, you know, is you now his primary insurance, you, and they pay. After waiting six hours, Deborah Griffin was finally seen. Okay. She was given pain medicine to relieve her abdominal pain, but she almost left before receiving care. I was going to sign myself out and if need be, go to another hospital. Within 10 minutes, they had me back here. For millions of Americans without insurance, the ER becomes their first and only line of care. Some patients are referred to the ER by their primary care doctor. Ms. Parsons, hello. I had patients who tried to contact their either their primary care doctor or the clinic, but were unable to get access and therefore um, were instructed to come here. We're definitely the safety net and have been able to see those people and accommodate them. All right. Let's try. Other other patients have seen their primary care doctor. You know, the woman we just saw saw her primary care doctor. Um, for a similar problem last week, and she's just gotten acutely worse, and you know, it wouldn't have been prudent for her to wait another day to see that person in the morning. Now what do I need to do? Move another one out of a room, move another one in. We got this crazy system, the healthcare system. They're all done? There's no discouragement, you know, to go and get your own primary care physician, make that appointment. Uh, you know, we've got people that will abuse the system, come in for minor complaints. Robert Bowers sought treatment in the ER for what doctors describe as a swollen gland. Yeah, well, I went in the emergency room twice. Yesterday was Sunday, so I figured probably the doctors wouldn't be in, I guess. So I decided to just go to the emergency room because I knew they'd be open. You know, my personal experience, I had I, my doctor's office tell me to bring my son to the emergency room for a sports physical. I mean, truly, they did. And I said, are you crazy? Why would you tell? Because people tell us that all the time. Oh, my doctor said to come. And we never believe him. It's like, why would a doctor's office until that happened to me? After 94% room air, she went to 100% on the non within eight seconds. A decent number of our folks who come to the hospital ought not to need to come here. We have the patient who has, have, who has a known diagnosis of seizures, 
who is out of seizure medication, wildly inefficient way of doing things. A couple days ago, I did some pills, and then I took some other stuff, and then I smoked some weed, and then I had a seizure, and my friends called the ambulance and brought me up here. And we have a lot of uh, what we call frequent flyers of patients that come daily. Like, they all know me by, like, first name now. I might as well, like, run a room in here. The healthcare system is broken. I just don't know. We don't always have the answers how to change it. We see a lot of patients. I don't think Washington ever makes anything better. We're just happy with what we've got. It's challenging to, to see all of them and to meet everybody's needs. We expect people to know everything, and with all the science that we have, we expect the answer. It's ridiculous. It's insane. And that doesn't always happen. The only level of healthcare I believe in for, that's free is for people who are not capable of supporting themselves. If you have insurance, it's probably a whole lot easier on you. They have nowhere to turn, nowhere to go, and they come here. In that situation, that's what the government's for, and that's why that's needed. If you don't have insurance and you work for a living and you got bills to pay, and you got to come up with some money to pay your bills, and then if you get sick, you got to pay those bills too. I mean, it gets pretty hard on people, I guess. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of help out for people in my situation. <laughs> not until I'm able to go back to work. I really want to be able to choose, you know, where I'm going. And I want a special, I want the specialty care for diabetes, too. I would just hate to have to, for our plans be changed, or told that we have to go see certain doctors. I think we have some opportunity here with health care reform to improve the efficiency. It'd be very easy to change some behaviors if you gave everybody health insurance and charged them more money if they smoke on their premiums, duh, you know, it works on cars, right? We care more about cars than people. There needs to be an effort to reduce the, the cost of medical care and the cost of medical insurance. If we go to the universal health coverage, my prediction is that the demand for services will increase and we'll actually have more emergency department visits than we do now. And that will probably persist for a decade or so until we can get enough resources in primary care where there's enough physicians and other health care providers to see patients. You have to provide more, more family medicine doctors. I think what Congress could do is come down and spend 24 hours in an emergency department to see what it's really like, to see what type of patients we have, to see the desperation. These people don't come seeking medication. We're like their last resource. Thank you.